Hey everyone, my name is Toasty Marshmallow, and I'm an artist who likes talking about outfits and character design. I kept seeing cool clothes on Pinterest, and a lot of them sparked, pun intended, my imagination for specifically Yang outfits. I was like, that would look good on Yang, and that would look good on Yang, and you would look good on Yang. And I was like, hey, I can kind of draw, and I want to see Yang in some fashionable outfits for a change. All of these drawings are beginning to be a bit outdated at this point. My art style has actually evolved from this point, but that's okay. I still think they serve their purpose pretty well and communicate what I was going for for the design. If you notice any issues you have with the designs, you can always let me know in the comments. I will always listen to any constructive feedback. With that said, let's get into the meat of the video. In the very first volumes of Ruby, the show used a specific engine to make it, and that engine had a difficult time when it came to color. If two objects had a similar color and overlapped at any point, there wasn't enough shading or texture to differentiate them. And being 3D models, there were no lines to differentiate them either. So the result was that if two colors were similar or the same and overlapped, they would just look like one big blob on screen. The crew was aware of this, and this detail was considered when making the characters' outfits, which means the resulting character designs were hugely affected and somewhat limited by the show's engine, which I personally find really fascinating. I think that they felt that particular characters, though, couldn't wear too much of their distinct color, or honestly they didn't know how to design a whole outfit that is largely one color. In order to avoid having the characters all look like one color blob, they opted to separate the torso and limbs with things like belts and scarves. Somewhere along the line, however, they decided Yang couldn't wear her signature color of yellow. Is that they felt yellow looked the most blobbish on screen, or perhaps they felt yellow was too bright? Or maybe they just don't like yellow. These are just guesses. I don't really know the reason. I've always felt that Yang, they feel this insistence to put her in browns and beige, which is not yellow. And honestly, it kind of looks like she's wearing a potato sack a lot of the time. She has no shape, and she's always wearing like baggy, vaguely motorcycle leather heavy clothing, and I feel like she never gets to wear something feminine, fun, and stylish, literally since the beginning of the show. Volume 9 just came out, and she's still wearing her Volume 8 outfit, even though both areas of these volumes take place in lands with wildly different temperatures, and she's wearing tan and light burgundy, and no yellow to be seen, except the bright neon yellow gauntlets that she has which definitely don't clash in any way. But one day I was sitting and I was thinking to myself, there are plenty of yellow characters in anime that are super cute. Mami from Madoka Magica is a personal favorite, but honestly you can pick any yellow magical girl from any magical girl show. There's so much beautiful art of people's characters on Pinterest that feature primarily yellow. There's literally a plethora of ways to make yellow cute, and to me it just feels like they need someone on the character design staff to show the possibilities of designs with one pop of color. Monty's original idea of these mostly black and white character designs with a pop of color seems to be completely forgotten by whoever's in charge of approving these character designs. To show some empathy though, they did use to churn out a volume like every year, so I don't even know if they had the time to go back and tweak things. The script and character designs may never have had the time to be refined, which is really unfortunate. Today I want to show some love to a character that I feel got particularly shafted when it comes to character designs. Here is 7 redesigns for Yang Zhaolong. Originally, I was going to make 10, and honestly in the future I might make 3 more just to finish this challenge that I have imposed upon myself, but I felt like 7 was plenty for one video, so perhaps there will be more Yang designs in the future. So I heard a rumor that Yang was originally going to wear mostly blacks with yellow accents, all the way back in volume 1, and I guess they changed their minds and put her in mostly browns and oranges, which is not yellow. My guess as to why Yang couldn't wear a lot of black is that the crew felt that her teammate Weiss would look very out of place in her team. If Yang had worn black and yellow, that would mean three out of the four girls would have had black as a major color in their palettes, while Weiss is the only one who's wearing no black at all. And to boot, she's practically wearing all white, which is the exact opposite of black. Weiss would look like she doesn't even belong in her own team. Maybe they felt putting Yang in brown would help the potential overuse of black. However, I still don't really understand why they decided to put her in a lot of oranges, too. I feel like that muddies up her color palette even more. So for my first design today, I have essentially made a recolor of her volume 1 design with a few tweaks that change her silhouette ever so slightly. I simply called this one Yang with white pants. To fix the too much blacks alienating Weiss issue, I simply added white to this palette and adding white is perfect because that's Weiss's color. 
I think this recolor makes Yang look like she fits into her team even better than before because she has her color as well as all her teammates' colors in her palette. To address the issue of Yang looking too blobbish on screen by having too many yellows overlapping, I separated Yang's hair from her torso by simply adding a black jacket that curls all the way up to her neck so that her head, neck, and hair are separated and therefore are always visible. Additionally, her boots have sonai metal plates, which would make her kicks be devastating in combat. The plates are gold to yellow, so that despite her yellows being pretty divided in this design, she might still read as the yellow character due to the reoccurrence of the color. Her sleeves smooth out so that Ember Silica can transform without issue, and she has a little side pouch for spare bullets. This second look is actually the first I designed, I hope that's not too confusing, and perhaps the art is a little outdated at this point. Yang's face in this look is particularly unique, and after rendering this one, I sought to make Yang look more Yangish in her other six outfits, so just pardon this one for looking a little different than the others. The idea for this look came about when I wanted to see if I could make a believable ruby design with a cute and ordinary piece of clothing like frilly halter top. The original sketch had her in a playful pose and featured what were going to be brown thigh-high boots and white short shorts. I think I changed it to black because I felt the large amount of brown would distract from the yellow palette too much. She wears enough brown in the show already, so we all know how that concept looks. <laughs> so this is Frilly Halter Top Yang. For this look, I wanted to stick with only three colors, yellow, pale purple, and black. I think the idea of incorporating more pale purple in Yang's looks is a good way to cool down all these warm yellows while making her pale purple eyes feel like they belong in the design much more. To address the issue of yellow overlapping in this look, I opted to simply cut Yang's hair. This way she can wear as much yellow on her torso as her heart desires. The cut itself is light and fluffy, and I personally think it's super cute and makes for an adorable silhouette. Speaking of silhouette, this whole pose was decided so that the viewer could see the adorable bow that she has on her back, as well as to see her frills in movement. And I do love the fun, happy energy this pose provides. I miss when Yang was a fun party girl who also happens to kick ass. I gave her a side pocket for spare bullets, some jewelry, and armor sewn onto her boots. I personally don't like the look of armor, when it has these chunky belts to affix the armor to the body. Instead, I like to sew armor right onto the clothes so that the armor appears to be painted onto the person, and I think it looks a lot sleeker. It's also a lot less fussy to draw and render. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about this look. Let's move on to design number three. Honestly, the idea for this design came about because I just think Chi Pao dresses are really pretty, and I wanted Yang to wear one. Her mother, Raven, definitely seems Japanese or Chinese in origin in our world, which would technically make Yang a biracial baby, because her father is decidedly not Japanese or Chinese, so I think incorporating some of her influence is a cute nod. Originally, it was just going to be a crop top with the same silky fabric as a Chi Pao dress, however I extended the crop top to a full-blown dress and added a black jacket. There's actually a chibi version of this one because I was drawing chibi characters at the time to cheer myself up, so I drew Yang as one to test these clothes. So this is Yang in a chi pao dress. I thought of a concept where Yang is once again wearing a black jacket, but the yellow she's wearing is not just yellow, but has the same red repeating textile so that even if her hair and the dress in this case overlap, a person would always be able to tell at a glance where the torso is because there's a bright red pattern there at all times. This way, even in a speedy combat scene, her torso is always clear, in theory, of course. I personally really like how this design and pose came out. Honestly, this challenge really compelled me to learn the importance of posing in character design. I learned that it's so important to prioritize the pose that I feel the pose at this point is like 60% of the design or so. The pose has all the personality and the clothes are a cherry on top. That's how important I feel the pose is now, thanks to this challenge. So this pose she's in makes me think that she spends all her daddy's money. She doesn't even care. I made this textile of red roses on my own, and I'm very proud with how it turned out. I hope the dress looks shiny and glamorous because I spent a lot of time trying to make it as reflective as possible. I added a design on our tights that I improvised. A lot of little details that are added are improvised, and I think it's just a cool detail that adds some interest to her lower half. To make the look even more cute, I added ruffles on the black jacket to add more interest in the silhouette. They may be a little hard to see, but there are two yellow chains that connect the jacket so that when she fights, the jacket sides don't need to be animated flapping around. 
The one thing I miss from the chibi is the cute purse that would carry spare bullets in, but at the time, I was getting exhausted with rendering chains and opted to leave it out, but she is supposed to have a chain purse here. The chains are yellow to camouflage into the chi pao dress so that the dress for the most part isn't interrupted. For design 4, I drew a sketch and really liked how it turned out, so I fully rendered it. I wanted to make Yang a vacuo look that is a really big departure from her usual looks everywhere else. A few rules I made for myself was that Yang couldn't wear any black, because black attracts heat. Her outfit therefore would feature a lot of white instead, because white is cooling and breathes a lot easier. Another rule was that she couldn't wear something too heavy, like a long sleeve top or jeans, once again due to the heat. So the solution for me was to put Yang in something extremely light and breathable that frankly wouldn't necessarily be great for combat, but there are plenty of instances in the show itself that have characters wearing things that aren't very protective. So I think it's all right, especially in a desert setting. So here is Yang vacuo look. It's noticeably simpler than all my other looks and that's intentional. For the heat of the desert, Yang has her hair up in a style identical to Dolores Madrigal because I literally watched the movie and love the hairstyle so much that I wanted to incorporate it somewhere. This tucks away Yang's probably insulating hair so the back of her neck can breathe and yes, I think about these things. Also with her hair up, she can wear yellow on her torso again without having actually to cut her hair. This solves the yellow overlapping issue and successfully separates the yellows in this look. I gave her yellow heels so that her yellow color might still be recognizable, but you can be the judge of that. She has a tan in this look and I kind of feel Yang is the kind of person who wouldn't mind having a tan at all. Unlike someone like Weiss who would probably be covered head to toe in something that's breathable. To address the scarf on her midsection, this was inspired by her volume 2 look actually. In her volume 2 alternate outfit, she's wearing a purple sash on her hip. And think of this scarf as a spiritual successor to that. To me, it looks a bit like a sunset in the desert with a starry sky, and it's very Arabian Nights fairy tale inspired, which I think is perfect for the show in question. It's obviously very sparkly, and I love it a lot, making it the centerpiece of this look. This design does incorporate a lot more purple than usual, and if anything, I would probably tone down the purple again if I were to redraw it. On the other hand, I feel like such a unique setting like Vacuo could justify a distinct change in palette, making the season and its designs very memorable and distinguished. So I think it's alright in this case. For her legs, I was exploring Pinterest and came across stockings that are ripped, but then the bows take place at the center of the rips and thought the holes in the tights would allow the legs to breathe, which is perfect for the heat. I added some, probably not real gold, onto where the bows would be, and the intentional holes have little swirlies, I love swirlies, decorating the sides. I added lots of jewelry and gave her hoop earrings, which I think is very fun, and inspires a slight pirate theme or motif. This design coming up is honestly a miracle, speaking of its inception anyway. I was drawing what I call doodles to test the color schemes of my looks because I remember I had done a rough color test for a design that was in my mind. When you draw just from your mind, it can look terrible sometimes. Every design you make should be tested on a small scale first. That's something I learned from this challenge. Try out as many color combinations as you can. Try out as many different kinds of clothes you've never drawn before. Just drawing from your mind honestly seems like the problem the show might have. Additionally, when you consider there may not be much of a refinement process, that might be why we're stuck with all these lukewarm looks. Anyhow, the outfit I had come up with was terrible. The colors did not work whatsoever, and that design won't be in this video, thank goodness. So yeah, from then on I decided to draw little doodles of my ideas before fleshing them out and rendering them. And this doodle started out to be just a random rough that I had no faith in. I was going to erase it, but then I decided to just fix my problems with it and push it a little further. Also in my sketchbook, I had thought of the concept of split colored pants and I drew a sketch of that, but actually instead I fell in love with the top that I had designed for that look. When I had experimented and doodled it, I realized it was actually a really good look for Yang and I decided to render it. So this whole piece and resulting outfit may not have happened if I had given up on it, which makes it kind of a miracle. So here's Yang in gold armor. In terms of yellow separation to avoid overlapping, the yellows in this outfit are scattered and separated. It's unified by this black matching set of an outfit. It's a very simple solution. Also, her hair is up in a fun ponytail with a rose attached. I like rose imagery on Yang because it unifies her with the rest of the team, and her sister in particular. The reds in the design are also scattered throughout this outfit, never amalgamating into one place so that they don't overstay their welcome and become more than an accent. 
I felt the legs needed some red on them, so I put a chain and two red gems to dangle and just bring some of that red to her lower half. If I were to redesign this, I would probably add bits of red to the actual armor on her legs, but I decided I had spent long enough on this design and I needed to move on. Personally, I think yellow, black, and hints of red is the best color palette for Yang. The ribbons descending took the longest, and this design may have been the one that took the longest just to render in general. In terms of the actual armor she's wearing, I just like the idea of fighters in media to have their limbs protected, because their limbs are directly exposed to the enemies they fight. Their limbs are their weapons. It's satisfying to me. Yang can kick and punch all day, and her limbs are nice and safe and protected. I could make them as gold as I wanted to because her hair is up and won't typically overlap in a fight scene. I sometimes think this could be a design for an AU, where she could be a freaking magical girl. I also love the pose on this one. She's so expressive and happy, and her pose looks like she's going to dance, like a tango or something. It's very cute in my opinion. But yeah, that's about it. I drew a doodle of Yang, I liked it, and rendered it very faithfully. On to outfit number 6. This next design is my personal favorite. I had been tweaking and revising this design over and over again. It started with wanting to put a majority of Yang's yellow on her lower half, and I wanted to do so with big poofy mechanic pants, is what I call them in my mind anyway. But I wanted to add something more. I didn't want the design to be just Yang in poofy pants, and that's the end of the design, you know? I tried adding armor to the outside of the pants, but I felt like the silhouette was really not working. So I had the idea to put the armor on the inside of the pants and split the pants down the middle to reveal the armor inside, and I think it turned out. What do you think? Is this cool to anyone? Anyway, this is Yang in mechanic pants. A very simple solution to the yellow overlapping issue is to place the yellow on her lower half via pants leggings and stuff like that, with her hair in a very high ponytail. The animators can have her hair conveniently bouncing away from her yellow pants in combat so that they don't have to become a yellow blob on screen too often. I made the armor very pale and unsaturated blue so that it looks like it's gray by association. I did this to cool down the design from all these yellows, and I added some of that pale blue to her necklace and earring to carry that color throughout the design. And I made her top and jacket mostly black, because I think black and yellow look really sleek together. I made her shoes these really heavy duty black boots so that when she kicks, her feet and toes are nice and protected. I really like how her pose and facial expression turned out, because the gesture and outfit seem to complement each other. Despite being kind of punk-ish, she still reads as very friendly. I think the design looks very succinct. There are a few deviations from the yellow, black, and gray accents in this palette, and I think it's very readable. I think it's pretty easy to make a nice Yang design with pretty much just yellow and black, and it mystifies me as to why the crew doesn't seem to feel the same way. Anyways, now on to design number seven, our final design for today. So I went on a bit of a journey for this design. All the way back in 2021, I made this fan art of Team Ruby in winter clothes. I actually still like the designs, however Yang got pretty neglected, not gonna lie. So for this challenge that I imposed upon myself, I sought to give Yang a brand new snazzy winter outfit. I started with wanting to put Yang in a heavy cotton or wool coat similar to that of Blake's coat in this lineup, and just making this sparkly gold with white boots and a light purple scarf, just as a starting point. However, I felt she really wasn't looking like the yellow character despite wearing a lot of gold. Gold just feels a lot different than bright yellow does. So I started from scratch and wanted to try putting Yang in something with a lot more shape. I ended up with probably one of the most hideous designs in my opinion. She had this like huge gray coat and long neon yellow ski pants. Obviously it wasn't working. I mean, look at this. This, at one point, was seriously going to be a Yang design, can you believe that? Anyways, I tried again and put her in a black jacket instead with the same ski pants, but this time I put her in these hefty white winter hiking boots. I thought this would be the look, but ultimately I wasn't vibing it. So I went back to the like heavy cotton kinds of coats that I put the other three in and attempted to put her in something gold again with brown boots, but I still felt like it wasn't quite there. And so I recolored that design with primarily black and gold, but then I remembered in my original lineup, only Weiss is wearing primarily white and the other three girls are wearing lots and lots of black, particularly Ruby and Blake. So for this redesign, I wanted to put Yang in a primarily white color scheme to have her in a pair with Weiss. 
When I came across this white full body outfit that has gold accents and I was like, yeah, I feel like Yang would wear warm pants because she does a lot of kicking and I wanted her legs to be comfortably able to kick for both her and the animators. And then I came across two more pins that were all white suits and then a second one that had like fur lining on the back and I thought it was super stylish and gorgeous and I was sold. I decided to combine the white full body suit with gold accents and the full body winter suit with a fur lining and I created what I like to call winter sunshine yang. In volume 2 she wore an alternate outfit that had this pale cream yellow and I thought that if the show considers that outfit to be yellow enough then so do I and so I covered her in a very pale cream yellow color with gold accents and I decided to use red gems and flames as an even lighter accent to match the red shells of her amber silica. I designed a Japanese style dragon that I colored gold to line her legs so that attention was drawn to her legs during combat. I played with the idea of still giving Yang a coat that she closes and the same flowing pants, however honestly I felt the design was best with the coat stylishly open. Just consider the cream turtleneck to be the warmest of wool in existence. And that goes for the pants too. I imagine them being extremely lush and fluffy to the touch and extremely insulating. I'm personally really proud of this piece. Yang looks like she's so calm and collected, and I had her in a pose where she's walking to illustrate the outfit in movement so you can see how the outfit is flowing and elegant. Not only does it unite Weiss and Yang so that two girls are wearing a lot of black and two girls are wearing a lot of white so that Weiss looks like she belongs, but I also feel this design perfectly suits Yang's personality. It's elegant, but still has a masculine energy with the emphasis on the pants and broad shoulders. I feel like they all suit one another and they all feel cohesive and like they exist comfortably in the same universe. So in conclusion, I feel Yang is the most stylish in these two color palettes. Black yellow with hints of red and white yellow with hints of purple. Don't be afraid to try the reverse too. Black yellow with hints of purple and white yellow with hints of red. I do believe brown can be included. I don't think you need to necessarily ban the concept of using brown entirely. However, I personally feel it distracts from Yang's yellows and it also doesn't belong in the ruby red, Weiss white, Blake black, and Yang yellow color palette and aesthetic that was such a cornerstone of Ruby's identity in the beginning. That's my opinion though. Feel free to incorporate brown if you personally feel it's stylish to you. Something that I would recommend is drawing low stakes, low effort doodles of your outfit concept before inking or coloring your outfit. It will save you a lot of stress and wasted time, and it also increases your creativity and experimentation when making character designs. Another thing I would recommend is creating a Pinterest board or something like that, where you can collect real clothing and fashion inspiration, and I would recommend getting pictures of new fashion ideas every day or every other day. This will expand your visual library, and that combined with your experimentation will create truly unique and beautiful character designs. Thank you so much for watching my video. This is my first video, so if you would like more content, flip that subscribe button's pancakes and make your like button's eggs sunny side up.